Hi, welcome to the YGAP video series. My name is Keely, and I work for the YMCA of Southwestern Ontario. Here, we break down new research and answer important questions about youth and gambling. At the Youth Gambling Awareness Program, or YGAP for short, our mission is to raise gambling awareness among youth aged 8 to 24 and adults involved in young people's lives. We provide services through a balanced and neutral lens, educating and raising youth gambling awareness across Ontario. This is our first video in our series on gambling and media. Today, my colleague Yasmin and I will be talking about why it's important to discuss media and gambling together. Yasmin, I'm really excited about today's topic. Let's start our discussion with the definition of gambling, just so we're all on the same page. So at YGAB, we define gambling as risking something of value. This can be money or items on an uncertain outcome. So you never know if you will win or lose. Gambling is often shown in the media as exciting and completely harmless entertainment. We see gambling shown in movies and TV shows as glamorous and socially desirable. This is very true, Keely, and these messages can be emphasized within families and social circles where people are engaging in gambling activities like sports pools, poker games, and even gifting scratch cards and lottery tickets. So it's really important to recognize that gambling is an activity that does involve inherent risk. And as such, people should be practicing harm reduction strategies when participating, such as setting limits on the amount of time and money spent on gambling. Absolutely. Media has become increasingly more involved in our lives, along with traditional forms of media, radio, television, magazines. We are also actively engaged with social media and social networking platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, podcasts, and lots more. And let's not forget video games, too. All forms of media are used to persuade, inform, and entertain us. We are getting messages from multiple sources more than ever before. Although media has and continues to evolve, one constant in all forms of media is advertisements. And as with the development of media, advertising techniques have also evolved across time. And we are constantly being shown ads, sometimes from the moment we wake up, on average up to 4,000 a day. Sometimes we don't even realize that it's an ad we're seeing. They can be anything from an ad on social media, commercial, or recognizable logos on clothes and devices. Ads are any type of paid message used to inform or influence people. And as new media forms and advertising techniques evolved, it's had impacts on almost all industries and the gambling and video game industries are no exception to this. New forms of media equal new gambling opportunities. Two examples are loot box unlocking and esports betting. Absolutely. Loot boxes are virtual containers found in video games that players can buy or and open using in-game or real-world currency. Different video games have different names for loot boxes, like loot crates or loot llamas, for example. Players don't know what is inside until after paying and they open the container. They are extremely popular and can be found in lots of games like Fortnite, one of the most popular video games in the world. Very true, Keely. They are very, very popular. So why is opening loot boxes considered as gambling? Opening or unlocking a loot box, you are still risking something of value, the currency to open a box, and you don't know if you are going to win or lose as you don't know what's inside the box. Loot boxes often contain skins. Skins are aesthetic items for your character, like armor or different hairstyles. They generally don't help the player in the game, but do have value and is a type of virtual currency. Some skins are more rare than others, and players can sell them outside the game on third-party sites, like Skin Cashier, and use that currency to make bets online as well. Yeah, and it's really important to be aware that often when players open a loot box, they will get more common items or items they might already have. 
sometimes the contents of the loot box doesn't add up to the amount paid to open it. Another example of a new gambling opportunity is esports betting or betting on competitive video gaming. That is true. People bet on esports similarly to how they bet on sports like football or hockey. There are also esports tournaments. Many competitive gamers compete against each other in particular games. People can bet on who they think will win, who might score the most points, or get to a certain level first. There are lots of different ways that people can bet on esports as well. Popular games for esports include League of Legends and Dota 2. Absolutely. So not only are there new ways on media for youth to gamble, but gambling opportunities are promoted more widely across media forms as advertising techniques advance. So this is why discussing gambling and media together is important. It has been shown that media can influence youth perceptions of gambling. So let's get into some research. Studies show that youth report ads show gambling as easy, fun, and life-changing, also rewarding, and as an opportunity to socialize as well. These are the same motivations that lead youth to participate in gambling and portray it as a risk-free activity. Another study found those who were exposed more to TV shows and ads that were pro-gambling had more positive attitudes towards gambling. And conversely, found those who saw more anti-gambling news stories and ad had more negative attitudes. Lastly, a study found that gambling ads increased the availability of gambling activities by raising the audience's awareness of ga available gambling activities, in addition to modifying attitudes about these activities as well. Absolutely, Yasmin. And research has shown that gambling ads also influence behavior. One study found that 42% or almost half of youth reported that gambling ads made them want to try gambling. 61% of youth imagined what they could buy with their winnings, and 39%, or almost two out of five youth, were more likely to purchase a lottery ticket after seeing a lottery advertisement. Those are some really interesting statistics, Keely. And also to add on, new research shows that during the first month of lockdown from COVID-19, 96% or almost all youth aged 11 to 14 saw a gambling ad and 42% or almost half of youth said that the ads made them want to try gambling immediately after seeing a gambling ad and 7% of youth made an immediate gambling purchase as well. Wow. So we know that gambling ads can also influence other aspects of life. The media shows gambling as an alternative to hard work and an easy way to secure an ideal future. Youth might be encouraged to neglect education and employment or other important pursuits to then pursue gambling. Similar findings have also been reported in other industries like tobacco and alcohol. For example, a study found that young adolescents who were exposed to high levels of advertising for alcohol were 50% more likely to consume alcohol and 36% more likely to have intentions to consume alcohol in the upcoming year compared to those exposed to lower levels of advertising. Another study done in Australia found children between the ages of 12 to 14 reported that they preferred the cigarette brand that sponsored their state's major league football competition. That's really interesting. Research in 2017 showed one's intentions, familiar cultural values, and the influence of media and marketing are all interconnected. It showed also, that youth gambling consumption patterns and intentions are influenced by socialization factors like media influence, family members' opinions, and again, those cultural values. Very interesting, Keely. And in response, many provinces in Canada and various countries are implementing guidelines and policies. For example, Ontario established guidelines for gambling, alcohol, and tobacco advertising. But despite, despite enforcing these guidelines, gambling advertisements are still widespread in society since guidelines do not apply to all possible global advertising opportunities like we see on the internet. 
Absolutely. Gambling ads normalize gambling behavior and promote it as harmless activity with little to no consequences. However, as we have discussed, gambling is, by its definition, is inherently risky. Well, we have discussed some of those risks today, as Keely had mentioned, and feel it also is important to talk about harm reduction strategies or ways that youth can be safer when interacting with media and gambling. Firstly, when engaging with media, it's important to practice critical thinking. Critical thinking is when we view media in a critical way. Ask questions. It's not about having the right answers, but asking the right questions. For example, who produced this message and why is it being shown to me? That's a really great tip right there. And you can also install ad blockers as well. We do suggest setting limiting screen time and encourage youth to engage in offline activities. Lastly, for media, share with care. Beware of misinformation. Do your own research, check the dates, and authenticity before sharing. Gambling, setting time and money limits is a great strategy to help minimize risk. Similarly, balance gambling with other activities you enjoy and learning about the risks of gambling is very important to stay and play more safely as well. Here at YGAB, we've developed and offered two workshops to share knowledge and build relevant skills on these topics and more. Our media literacy workshop helps raise awareness on gambling advertisement and promote the development of critical thinking skills necessary to analyze these advertisements. The second workshop, YGAP's Gambling Workshop, outlines the various gambling opportunities that are found in different media forms, such as through video games and on social media. We focus on youth populations as they are a greater risk for developing problem gambling and may be more susceptible to the influence of advertising as they form their ideas about the world around them as well. If you want to learn more information about YGAP specific services, please visit our website at ymcagta.org. And to finish this and every video, we are going to share information on where you can get free and confidential support in your community. If you want more information or if you ever feel like you need to talk to someone about gambling, there is Connex Ontario available online or at 1-800-66-531-2600. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you will join us again in our second video in our gambling and media series. Next time, we will talk about how gambling ads have changed to target youth. Thank you so much, and we hope you have a great day.